Hello! In this video, we are going to discuss the synthesis of epoxides by the peroxidation of alkenes. Here is the general structure of an epoxide, the uh, defining structural relationship is this three-member oxirane ring where we have two carbons and one oxygen. And then we have four different, possibly four different, groups attached to the two carbon atoms, R1, R2, R3, and R4, which could either be identical or some variation of being identical and different. A key reagent in this synthesis is a peroxy acid. So we notice the similarity to an ordinary carboxylic acid, but now we have between the carbon and the acidic hydrogen, we have two oxygens rather than just one. For our purposes uh, in this video, we are going to restrict our attention to the peroxy acid where the R is a methyl group, and this would give us peroxyacetic acid. Here we have a generalized structure of an alkene with substituent groups R1, R2, R3, and R4, which could be identical, completely different, or some combination thereof. Typically, for our purposes, the R groups are going to be some kind of alkyl group. One thing to notice in the peroxy acid is that we have an oxygen-oxygen single bond, which we recognize as an ether linkage, and we know that uh, single bonds between uh, elements of the second row of the periodic table tend to be very weak, and we recognize this in hydrogen peroxide. So this particular bond is going to break, and the electrons are going to go and add to the carbon-oxygen bond and convert this into a double bond. Similarly, some of the electrons from the carbon-oxygen double bond are going to flow to the electron-deficient hydrogen, and we're going to get a new oxygen-hydrogen bond, and the carbon-oxygen double bond is going to be reduced in order to a carbon-oxygen single bond. As the oxygen-hydrogen bond breaks to the acidic hydrogen, the electrons flow to form a bond between oxygen and carbon, so we get an oxygen-carbon single bond that's going to form there. The electrons in the carbon-carbon double bond are going to flow to oxygen, and this double bond is going to be reduced in order to a carbon-carbon single bond, and in return, we're going to get the formation of a carbon-oxygen single bond here. The result of the reaction is as follows, which has been drawn in a somewhat exaggerated fashion to make it easier to see in continuity with the uh, reactants. So we see now we have a new oxygen-hydrogen single bond formed. This carbon-oxygen bond, which was a double bond, is now a single bond. This carbon-oxygen bond, which was a single bond, is now a double bond, and we've converted, on the left-hand side, our peroxy acid into an ordinary carboxylic acid. For the reactions that we're going to examine in this video, that means we start with peroxyacetic acid, and one of the products is going to be acetic acid. On the right-hand side, now we see that the carbon-carbon double bond of the alkene has been reduced in bond order to a carbon-carbon single bond. And now we have these two new carbon-oxygen bonds have formed where the oxygen had been part of the peroxy acid on the left-hand side. So we see on the right, we now have the formation of an epoxide. Here in table one, we list the results of the calculations. The important thing to note here, because table one will be repeated uh, near the end of the video, is the list of alkenes that we are using. So we can think of the alkenes that we're using in this particular video as ethylene, and then a series of all possible methyl uh, substitutions, whether we have one, two, three, or four uh, methyl substituents on the basic ethylene alkene. Now we show the computed structures 
for the reactants, the transition state, and the product for this peroxidation of alkene reaction to form an epoxide. It may look rather repetitious because we're always going to put the reactants first, and in every case, the oxidizing agent is going to be peroxyacetic acid, PAC. Here is the computed transition state for the reaction of peroxyacetic acid with our simplest alkene, ethylene. And then we can use this unsubstituted simplest alkene as a reference for the more highly substituted examples which will follow. The product of this reaction is going to be the incredibly important industrial compound, ethylene oxide, often just simply called EO. In the second reaction, our alkene is now going to be propene, often called propylene. So here we have a simple methyl substitution of ethylene. Here we have the computed transition state for the reaction of peroxyacetic acid, which is on the left-hand side, with propene on the right. And we can see in the dashed bonds that we have the newly forming bonds between the um, double-bonded carbons of propene and the oxygen from the peroxyacetic acid. And our product is going to be methyl ethylene oxide in this case. Here is the computed transition state now with our alkene being 1,1-dimethylethylene. And so notice that in the forming bonds between the oxygen and the alkene, that they have different lengths because the two carbons that are involved are not in equivalent environments. This reaction yields the product 1,1-dimethylethylene oxide. Here is the computed transition state of peroxyacetic acid, PAC, with a cis-substituted 2-butene. And we get the cis-1,2-dimethylethylene oxide as the product. Here is a computed transition state between peroxyacetic acid, but now with the alkene being the trans substituted 2 butene.
our product is the trans 1,2 dimethyl ethylene oxide. Here the alkene is 2-methyl-2-propene, which we might also designate as 1,1-dimethylpropene. So now we're getting to the more highly substituted alkene. The product is trimethylethylene oxide. Note on the right-hand side, it may appear that the two carbons are bound to each other, but that's deceptive because the upper carbon is attached to a hydrogen, which comes behind the front carbon. Our final reaction shows the computed transition state for the reaction of peroxyacetic acid with 2,3-dimethyl-2-butene. So here we have the most highly substituted um, alkene with four methyl groups. As promised before, here again, we show table one, and we can look carefully at particularly the second column, the enthalpy of activation for the various reactions. So we notice that the largest enthalpy of activation is for the least substituted alkene, ethylene. And as we increase the methyl substitution, so as we add electron releasing groups, we lower the energy of activation to the extent that the smallest energy of activation, the most likely to react is going to be the most highly substituted alkene, the 2,3-dimethyl-2-butene. We see similar tra trends with the um, enthalpy of reaction that the uh, most uh, enthalpically favored is again going to be with the alkene that is the most highly substituted with electron-releasing substituents. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Be safe, stay healthy, and as always, have a good one.